Yeah, I mean, Liam, I mean, obviously a fantastic start to the season. Do you know what? There was, there was a survey done, actually, with fans, like, like what their expectations were for the season. Do you know Reading fans? They were right down near the bottom in terms of their expectations. So, you know, um, are you surprised by the start you've made or were you fully expecting this? Um, I'm going to firmly sit on the fence on that one. Um, <laughs> we kind of didn't know what to expect. It was a... A uh, different kind of lead up to the season um, for everybody in terms of a short pre-season. Uh, obviously, we had the manager change. We had a last minute flight over to Portugal for a, a pre-season camp. Um, and then we were straight in. But, you know, I think with the work that's gone on in the training ground uh, for the last two, three weeks, um, I've been so positive. It, it does leave us with a lot of confidence leading into games. Um, so... When it comes to five o'clock on a Saturday, I think we can all look at each other and think we definitely earned that. So we, we're not surprised on the results there. But, you know, to get three out of three and, and uh, have nine points uh, on the board right now, it probably would surprise a lot of people. Now, now being honest, before he was announced as a ready manager, had you ever heard of him? <laughs> I, In I the greatest <laughs> respect, no, I hadn't, no. Um, but, you know, as soon as you get a new manager or even a new player, the first thing you do, you look them up. Uh, he had an unbelievable playing career, played some huge yeah. clubs. Um, and, you know, that's, that's instant respect uh, within the game. And then um, his first meeting, um, again, just took the respect right through the roof. Um, you know, it was difficult for him, I imagine, coming in so soon to the season. But he uh, implemented his uh, non-negotiables and his style of play very quickly. And it's left everybody with a lot of confidence. Um, we know what our jobs are individually and collectively. And um, it's all about accountability. Um, and I think as players, that's all you can ever ask for. Um, it's down to you. You go out there and you do your job. And what was the reaction from all the lads when he got the job? I mean, we were all sort of WhatsApping each other, sort of, sort of I suppose, all exchanging notes on, on uh, what you've Googled about him. <laughs> it happened so quickly. Um, yeah. it, it really did. Um, you know, you check social media, you see one name linked, and then next minute you see another name linked. And then before you know it, flying out to Portugal to meet our manager so it really did creep up creep up on us um, we, we flew over there unsure what to expect um, but he, he put us at ease straight away um, and like I said his, his respect went through the roof within the players with his uh, his first meeting and, and really stamping on uh, his authority and what he wants from us. So you were very impressed with his first meeting so how did he come across and what, what did he say to the lads because obviously he won you over straight away? Yeah, well, obviously, first and foremost, is a case of kind of introducing himself, um, uh, introducing his staff, and then it was just bang straight into it. These are the non-negotiables. Uh, this is how I expect our behaviour on and off the pitch. Um, this is the spirit I want from the team, from the club. Um, and this is how I want to play. That bit was broken down a bit more, obviously, with a lot more detail. Um, we started at the back and we're gradually working our way forward. Um, we're nowhere near... Uh, the finished article um, in terms of how he wants us to play. But I believe everybody walks onto the pitch on a Saturday now with full confidence in what the manager expects from you. Um, and over the next coming weeks and months, we're going to continue to work on um, really perfecting how he wants us to play and um, trying to win more games in, in that fashion. And what's, this, what's the training sessions been like uh, and, and what changes has he implemented already, do you think? Um, I think... First and foremost, he, he changed the schedule. Uh, we've had managers in the past. I think it's more of a European thing, a uh, four-day lead-up in, into games. Um, so, you know, each day has its own um, objective. So, you know, on a Thursday, for example, today, we worked a lot on our set pieces, um, and our, our sharpness. Um, and tomorrow will be a, a standard Friday for probably most football clubs up and down the country. Um, but there's also days in there where there'll be defensive work, there'll be attacking work, and, and we try and bring it all together And uh, on a match day, uh, like everybody expects, or everybody hopes, should I say, um, and, and tries to get the three points from it. Now, Lucas has obviously been flying. I think he's injured now, isn't he? Is that right, unfortunately? But uh, he's been involved in pretty much everything so far. Yeah, he's a, he's a player with great ability. Um, we were starting to see um, his full potential. He took a fall at the weekend. Um, we're hoping it's not as bad as first feared. Yeah. Um, but he, he's an important player. He's a, 
he's a really strong boy uh, with, with great feet as well. Um, he fits into the, the perfect um, striker, if you like. He can, he can do both sides of the game. Um, but, you know, I, I always think we've got to try and spin these things as well. Uh, we've got some really talented stri strikers waiting in the wings. Um, and they would have seen what's happened and the chances that have been created in the last four games and probably looking at lips thinking, this is my chance. So it's a really good opportunity for somebody to step up now. Yeah, and of course, Lucas was gutted, wasn't he, of course? Because, you know, when you get off to a flyer like that, you just want to keep going with that momentum. So it must be so frustrating for him personally. Yeah, absolutely. He's had a few injuries um, over the last 12 months or so, um, which has been unfortunate. Um, but he knows he's got full faith of everybody. And I think that's always a, a key thing in any footballer. It's confidence. Um, and the lads are definitely filling in with that. Uh, the staff are as well. Um, it's a case of, uh, as a leader, as a senior player, knowing how to treat your players. Um, over the last 12 months or so, I've definitely got to know him better, uh, along with some of the other boys. So we know what makes him tick. We know how to t talk to him. We know how to demand things off him. And the start of the season has shown that, really. He's doing the other side of the game well. And then yeah. we're, we're getting him into positions now where he can be a match winner. And everybody wants to be a match winner. So he's obviously been, you know, um, head in the clouds, if you like. He's absolutely buzzing. But he's had a little blip and I'm sure he'll be back stronger. Now, you've obviously been in a dressing room that's won promotion out of this division before. Uh, when you look around the place, do you feel that You've got the tools there at Reading. I mean, it's such a tight division, isn't it, between anyone? So I suppose everyone's got a chance. But do you sort of look around the dressing room and think, yeah, we've got, we, we got a chance here? Definitely look around and think we've got some talented players. Um, and then now it's a case of, you know, we're three games in. Yes, we've won three games. That's great. Um, but that's kind of history. If we can get to 10, 12 games and then begin to look around and see how we've got on in that first block, that will tell a lot. Um, because... The one thing I know that it takes to get out of this league is it's uh, it's a collective relent relentlessness. Um, every game, every training session, there's there's no let up. If you let up, you lose a couple of games and you lose pace. Um, so we need to really continue in the, the manner we have. Um, there's there's a bit of a culture coming around at the minute, a winning mentality. Um, but again, the flip side of that, that's easy when you're winning. When things go a little bit difficult, we lose a couple of games. Who's going to stand up and be counted then? If we can get uh, a large proportion of our squad uh, being counted, it leaves us with a great chance. Now, Liam, just a few words about yourself, really. I mean, I mean, you, you made, what, 11 Premier League appearances? Is that right? I think it was 11 you made in the end, wasn't it, at Leicester? Sounds about uh, right, yeah. Is, is there a part of you that feels there's a bit of un unfinished business in the top flight in regards to yourself? Uh, yes. In terms of, we'd like to get back yeah, there. And, yeah, you know. no, no, yeah. Um, I'm, amb I'm ambitious, but I'm realistic. Um, I know what it takes to get to that level and I feel like I've, I've gained enough experience now over the last uh, three or four years that if I do get back to that level, um, what it's going to take to stay there. But, you know, I, I've got to continue to work very hard. Um, Consistency is key. I'm coming into my prime, I think, as, as a centre-back nowadays, your prime's about 28 to 33. Uh, it seems to have shifted a bit uh, older now because of your experience and... Yeah. Uh, kind of reading of the game but it's definitely something um, I'm holding myself accountable for I need to get back to the Premier League and I really want to do that with Reading Football Club so um, you know I'm, I'm happy to kind of put that out there and if I don't do it for myself I'll be disappointed um, but I'm just going to do everything I possibly can work as hard as I possibly can um, that's in all aspects on and off the pitch and then let's see where that takes me yeah, because obviously you got to those heights and then didn't quite nail down the place like you would have liked. And and I saw an interview you did, obviously well documented uh, about what happened at Leicester. Obviously you you didn't make enough appearance, well you didn't make any league appearances you to to get the medal. And then the following year you you end up losing in the in the playoff finals and of course the disappointment of the penalty and all the rest of it. So you know you've you've had some tough times there, haven't you? So that must have made you a lot stronger. Definitely made me stronger. Yeah, um, kind of been quite a lot of it actually uh, over the last few years you know I've had that getting promoted uh, with my boyhood club starting yeah. the season playing very well getting found out um, I think I'm honest enough to say that I wasn't ready um, positionally um, actually overall I, I wasn't ready um, I had to leave the football club to come and get games um, yeah. I knew that I did that in my first year I think I played well every game I was available for I played we got to the playoff final obviously you, you think that's the moment you think 
well, this is the best move I've ever made. You know, I've come down straight back up. That was a really tough lesson to, to realise football isn't always a fairy tale. Um, and then I've just been grinding away after that. It's not been um, always great here. We know we haven't always won games. We haven't always competed um, at the right end of the table. But I've been learning. Um, you know, I've tried to stay quiet. Um, and just continue to work on my trade, work on my game. Um, and like I say, I'm always honest enough to say it hasn't always gone the way I wanted it to. But what I can say is I've learned a lot. Um, I've got a lot of experience behind me now. You know, I'm coming up to nearly 200 games for Reading. Um, and that's it. It's just that's all you can do. You can work hard, make sure you're right physically and mentally and, and kind of let the rest take care of itself. Just a couple of final ones for you, Liam. I mean, I mean obviously that... that, that would have been a, a, a gutting experience, obviously, at Wembley Stadium. Can you just describe the emotions of of what, how you're feeling emotionally when you do that at Wembley? Because it's every boyhood's dream to, you know, play at Wembley Stadium and then to miss a penalty. You know, what was the emotions going through your mind at the time? Because it's the worst final to lose in world football, I think, the uh, the championship. Yeah, final. yeah, it is. Um, I think at the time, you obviously, first and foremost, feel responsible for letting people down. Um, you know, there was... 45,000 Reading fans there and many more thousands at home wanting to see us go up. You've got your, your teammates, you've been for a gruelling season, 46 games, then the semi-final and then to get to the final to lose like that. Um, but I'd like to say one of my main things is, is my mental strength. So I felt sorry for myself the night uh, that it happened. I think that's obvious. Um, but the next morning, I can remember it so clearly. I got up, um, I went for a walk and I told my so if when I get back from the walk, we crack on, we go again. And it sounds uh, so simple, but that was the mentality. Um, you know, I worked my ass off that, that off-season, even though it was a short one. I came back um, and actually got player of the year the next season. So yes. I think that shows that I brushed it off. Um, and if you can get your head right, um, the rest will follow. And then Liam, I mean, if Reading were to get to a playoff final again and you're facing the same scenario... I, I, I guess all those experiences, you, you, you'll be right up there to take a penalty and hopefully go one better this time. Absolutely. Um, I think, well, first and foremost, you want your attackers to take penalties, but you've also got to understand uh, um, the emotions of a game, uh, the size of a game. Um, and at the end of a game, when somebody says who, who's having the penalties, that's not something that can be determined by anybody other than individual and I'm one of them people that I like to put myself in uncomfortable situations. Um, it's always mind over the matter, over matter. And if it was the player final tomorrow and it went to penalties, I'd absolutely put my hand up. Whether I get picked or not, that's a different story, but I'll be ready to take one.